This stone circle is known as the Nine Ladies Stone Circle, but actually there are ten stones. We have nine standing stones and also one fallen stone. And we also have an outlying stone known as the King Stone. But was this circle set out to some kind of deliberate geometrical plan? And did the original builders use some kind of unit of measurement to set out the circle? And whilst we may never know the true methods used by the people 5,000 years ago, what I'm going to show you today is some experimental archaeology where you can actually test the geometry of these types of circles for yourself. My experimental research suggests that the original builders were using a special form of geometry and that they were also using units of measurement. Not just at this site, but at half a dozen other sites not far from here. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take a unit of measurement used at Arbor Low Henge, which is located about five, six miles west of here. I'm going to demonstrate how that unit of measurement used at the Henge was also used at this stone circle. This is Arbor Low Henge. A massive ditch and bank earthwork with central stone circle. This henge dates to a period of British prehistory known as the Neolithic and it was probably built sometime between 3000 and 2500 BC. Unfortunately all the standing stones bar one have fallen due no doubt to their shallow stone holes and the ravages of the British weather over the last 5000 years. My research can demonstrate how the entire henge was set out using a single length of rope. The idea being that you would take one length of rope to set out the outer circumference of the henge and then you would fold that rope into measurements proportional to the hole so that each of the features for the, the bank and the ditch and the central stone settings can all be set out from that single length of rope and we're going to perform these demonstrations for you today. In our first demonstration we're going to show how a single length of rope 135 feet long was used to set out the outer circumference of the henge. If you're going to attempt this type of exercise yourself at your own henge monuments I would recommend that you find the geometrical centre of the henge itself and then only test the entrances, the circumference around the entrances to the monuments itself. Certainly there is less hassle than tackling the great earthen banks. This time we're going to fold that length of rope into half and we will use that measurement to set out the eastern segments of the central area. In our third and final demonstration we are now going to fold our length of rope into half again and we'll show how this measurement was used to set out the width of the northwest entrance. And finally we will then fold that length of rope into half yet again to show how the width of the ditches were set out using that measurement. The use of this 135 feet unit of measurement, as well as measurements proportional to the 135 feet, are found at a number of other sites within this area of Derbyshire. So how does this measurement work at Nine Ladies Stone Circle? Well, let's go and explore. So what we established at Arbor Low Hens was the use of a unit of measurement 135 feet long. We're going to use that same measurement here at the Nine Ladies Stone Circle. Certainly the distance between the circle 
and the outlying stone is 135 feet. I'm going to use the same length of rope we did at Arbor Low Henge and we're going to fold that rope into half, into a quarter, into thirds to demonstrate how a measurement used elsewhere can also be found at the Nine Ladies Stone Circle. So our first demonstration is to fold this length of rope into a quarter. The quarter length of 135 feet is then used to set out the diameter of the stone circle. Okay, so what we've established is that the diameter of the circle is equal to one quarter of the length to the outlying stone. So what we'll do now is show you how the diameter of the circle, one quarter of the length from here to the kingstone, was used to set out the circle itself. And then we'll fold the rope again to show how the stones were positioned within the circle. In this demonstration, we have folded the rope into half in order to set out the radius for the northern quadrants of the circle. In the next demonstration, we're going to show how the positions of the stones were set out within the circle using the same length of rope used for the diameter of the circle. Here we have folded the rope into three, which gives a length equal to one third of the diameter of the stone circle. And we can use this length to set out the positions of the stones in the northern quadrant of the circle. So the final demonstration will be to show how the length of rope we've been using to set out the radius of the circle and the positions of the stones of the circles can also be folded to set out the dimensions for the stones themselves. And in this demonstration we'll perform the full sequence of stretching the rope from the kingstone to the circle, setting out the diameter, We'll then fold the rope to set out the radius and then finally show how this measurement relates to the dimensions of this stone.
I hope you've enjoyed this video and I also hope that I have explained some of the geometry behind these stone circles. Thank you very much.